What's up guys, this one is a quickie, this is a video that you guys asked for of how to replace deep fluid in the Arma 7 scales Limitless infraction, felony, you know the drill and actually that kind of goes to all the other Armas also that share the same about construction of differential housing so first of all you remove these two this is a build that I'm uh, building right now for next video uh, it's a dual BLX system with dual 6S batteries and whatnot so it's going to be a pretty cool build but uh, in order for us to get this build going, we have to change the diff fluid to a million, just so the car is a little bit more sturdy and find itself on the asphalt. So you take down those screws that I showed you over there, you take down these two screws. Mm -hmm. The main idea is to take this front piece off the car pretty much. Let me actually zoom out just a tad so you guys can see better. And then you remove these two. Just like so. That Devolt is life. It's gyroscopic. And the link is in the description. So you guys can check it out. Just a handy tool. I think it's like 80 bucks or something. So, All right, now that you removed those two pieces, pretty much this entire front comes out of the car. That's all there is to it. And then just put this one aside. Nothing too crazy. Obviously, that's the perfect pass. Carbon fiber kit installed here just like so nothing too crazy put this aside and move it over soon i'm going to show you something else now this was the nitro infraction so this was rear wheel drive so it didn't have axles in the front or it had and i removed them but um, we're probably going to install them but usually when you have axles in the front you probably want to open these here also and remove the shocks entirely or in, uh, keeping the shocks here and then just flipping them around to the top so completely up to you but anyway now that we got this sorted out you can open these and then just remove this little piece right here i normally just remove them completely for my builds i'm not doing a lot of bashing on road it's just speed runs this will be an on-road basher so we're probably going to keep those sway bars on it you don't have to do it but uh, but it's an option so once you get access to the differential, pretty much just open all four screws, of course. That's it. And then this just pops out. You can clean it later on if you want to and whatnot. And then you just get the differential out. Now, before you do, make sure you don't have uh, bushings or shims. If you do, just pay attention and make note to yourself on which side they're at. Spinning that little body a little bit here will make it easier to remove the diff. Well, you will get messy. I mean, there's really no way around it. It's filled with grease, you know, the drill. So uh, you can use gloves. People sometimes do. I just sometimes get lazy and it's like two minutes. Anyway, my hands are going to be dirty and I'm going to wash them. So I just go with the flow. But you probably want to use gloves for all of this. So you fairly clean it. Nothing too crazy because don't forget, it will be super greasy in like, five minutes once you're done you know so uh, i'm just taking all the raw material or grease on it if you will just so it's a little bit nicer to work on and i'm not using microfiber for this one i'm just using a toilet paper just so i'm not wasting a good microfiber with too much grease be very gentle because those screws like to get eaten up easily this one no issue so i'm pretty happy about that but uh, so remove one remove two all right, you open that, you open the diff, and then pretty simple, you don't really have to take apart everything. What I sometimes do is I just let it sit like so, both of them, literally let it sit like that for like four, 15 minutes or whatnot. Then I come back, I wipe the excess, and I have a fairly empty differential. Sometimes I do put a toilet paper here and spin it. So it actually lifts all the oil out of it. It kind of makes it a little bit faster to dry, I guess, but... Uh, Honestly, the biggest deal is just since the viscosity is not as thick on the stock one, honestly, wipe as best as you can and just let it sit for like, I don't know, 30 minutes, something. Sometimes I do put a screw here just so there is a little room for the diff fluid to actually sit out. So wipe the excess first time and then we'll be back in 15 minutes and we'll have a lot more jizz on the table. And then we're gonna put a million, put it back together, done. All right, so about 15 minutes went by. Ooh, and much better. Little wipe here. 
and this is about it. Now you still have some of the stock the fluid in there, but I mean, again, you're fine. Like, so instead of a million, you might have like a, I don't know, like a 900,000 when you're done, if there is still some residue here, no biggie at all. Most of the diff fluid is completely removed off the diff. Yes, you can probably take the diff and clean it real well and make sure that it's super, super clean. There is nothing left in it, but come on, it's fine. Obviously, when you lock diffs or something like that, you have to go through this hassle, but uh, on this one, eh, not really. Just wipe the excess off your table, just like so. So, like I said, we're gonna use a million. This is what I'm using, and you can use whatever million you want. I give it some taps. Just because a million is so thick, anyway, it's gonna be a nightmare to actually pour it, so. Using pliers. This makes this process a little bit easier. And I pour some more of it in there. I just smear it off just like so. And then what I do is I try to gently spin it around just so it bites some of that deep fluid. You don't have a choice, just like right now, you need to work it in there. So not the easiest, a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. All right, so five minutes went by and it looks like it's pretty even. Looks pretty good in here. And I obviously wiped the excess already. So once you're done, you align those holes. Once you're done closing it with the handheld drill or screwdriver or whatever you got, you can do it by hand, just to have a little bit more sensitivity and you can torque them accordingly. So you torque one, then you torque the other one, then you torque this little bar right here, and then obviously you torque the one in the bottom, nothing too crazy. You probably want to spin it around a little bit just so you can see everything is on the up and up and everything is aligned. Once you do that, wipe off some excess because what you want on the outside is only grease. You don't want your diff fluid on the outside, especially when it's a million, just a little bit too thick, so gonna give you a little bit of a tougher ride um, when it comes to resistance. Once we're done, the differential is clean. Make sure there is no residue here on the ring gear. And that was the orientation here. By the way, guys, if you don't know the orientation or you forgot, what you probably wanna do is put your diff inside, just like so, make sure it sits, make sure it spins freely and nicely. Make sure that your mesh is correct. It's actually a pretty tight mesh here. So if it's not, add some shims, add some shims, sorry, here or here, spin it around. And then you wanna see if it goes forward, our drive shaft turns to the right and you wanna make sure that it's the same for the other side. Turns to the right, goes forward, turns to the right, goes forward. So that's pretty much it. Easy peasy. Once you make sure that your mesh is correct, everything spins freely and nicely, and you don't need shims, you can pull this out gently. If you can't pull it out, turn your cup so it doesn't hit that screw here. And then just, I already installed my new CVDs here. So just like so. And then you just let it in there, align those cups here so they don't touch the screw. So it's a lot easier on both sides. And once you're done, you just slide it in there. And that's pretty much it. Everything spins freely and nicely. Usually when this entire module is off the car, it's a lot easier to, do, to grease it from the bottom, but now it's not, so we're going to grease it from here. Now, it really doesn't matter. There are so many types of grease out there. I bought a bunch of them and I keep using different ones. It honestly, I really didn't feel any difference in all the ones that I was using. Honestly, it all felt the same. I used to be super picky about differential grease, but it honestly slings it all over the case in the first, I don't know, five minutes. So don't overthink it. Whatever grease you have, awesome. Um, this one was high pressure black grease by Losi, but it, it, like I've used so many kinds of grease. I used the uh, HD Horizon, ringing um ring gear and pinion grease i've used i used all of them and they're all honestly to me all feels the same anyway now that we're done here we can close our cup sometimes it's going to be a bit tricky and you'll have to use a little bit more force but uh 
Now it's closed. Most important, make sure that it's free spinning and there's just no drum involved. Here, it's not in place. It is now. Now, after you're done closing everything and it's about the same resistance, make sure that it's still free spinning. If not, you might want to make it easier on your dip and open just a tad here and there, just to the point that you feel that it's free spinning. This design is not the most accurate diff case in the world, but it's definitely good enough. So just open just a tad here and there and then close it until you feel some sort of resistance. Now don't forget some of this resistance will go away in time once the mesh grind itself just a little bit. You're talking about 0.1 millimeters, right? But uh, yeah, that seems good enough and it's closed. And now we can actually install our beautiful sway bar back in place. So just clip it like so. And the other side, same dealio. If you don't want your fingers to hurt or whatnot, or you're sensitive, just use middle nose pliers. I'm gonna show you how. So you just bring it in here and you just uh, crunch them together pretty much. So that's it. And now that it sits in place, you can bring this little guy right here, close it. One important thing about this one, you wanna make sure that your sway bar is rather loose. So shock, open side in the inside, just so you don't see it. Put the shock in its little slot, play around with it. Once the pin fits, move it around, bring that little screw from the top, from here, and just lock this pin. When it comes to the top of the shock, I like to put the breather side on the top side just so it's elevated, but that's pretty much it. You put this one on, you crunch things together and it's in. Then you put the little nut, this nut, and you just close it, all there is to it really. All right, now that we're done, everything is back in its place. Everything is smooth. All right, now our front piece, pretty much just the reverse order. Bring it from here, make sure that these two are above the chassis, of course, and then just pretty much slide it and you're done. Um, will be easier for you guys to probably put the top screws first and then it just holds the entire dealio and then you can do the bottom, so just easier. So that's one of them. second and now it kind of holds it in place so you can gently don't forget you have those nuts that you don't want falling on you so the longer screws are in the front the shorter screws are in the rear which is pretty much here make sure that you don't have these nuts popping on you so you can hold it with one finger nice and then the other one. Here's a quick tip for the front ones like we said it's going to be the longer screws if you don't want that nuts to actually pop and run away on you try to spin and then gently slowly insert the screw and it's going to bite that nut before you have the chance to actually uh, leave this little uh, uh, socket just like so so you can probably hold it from the other side but just just do that gently That's it, that's all there is to it. Front is done, locked, locked, everything is in its place. Obviously shocks are working fine and the differential is working fine while being a million. Now that we're done, we have a million front, million rear. We're gonna use a nice spool. This car is going to get two complete BLX systems and a gorgeous PPS dual motor mount. If you guys feel like it, stick around for the next video. See you guys.